We're now going to use one of the newer tools to draw the bowl that the ice cream is going to go into or the dish. And to draw the dish, we're going to go get the curvature tool, pen tool, which is next to the regular pen tool in a separate spot in the toolbar. Now, if you're viewing your toolbar in one column, it's going to be the next tool down just directly above the typing tool. If you're viewing it as two columns, like I have mine set here, then it's going to be on the right side of the pen tool the curvature tool. Um, you can use this tool either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. Notice here we're on artboard number two in this file and it's telling us to start at point A. We're seeing a template turned on here over in the layer palette. The template is a locked non-printing template for us. We have that on to help us draw the shape. They've, they've helped us out with that. You could do the same artwork using the regular pen tool, but we're going to try another tool here. You can see if you like it in the real world, you could choose the pen tool or this tool to do the same thing. Now, the curvature tool looks works quite a bit differently than the pen tool, but there are some of the principles that you'll see that are the same. We're going to start at point A and make a single click. Notice there's a dotted line, a dotted red line running down from the top to the bottom. Um, when I do this type of thing, I usually bring a guideline in from the side ruler and place it there to help me line up because I want to make sure my starting point and my ending point are exactly the same spot. The reason for that is we're going to draw just half of the dish, then we'll use one of the tools, the reflect tool, to make a copy of it and flip it over to create the other half, then we'll just join them together. That's a perfect way to make something symmetrical. For instance, if you have to draw a heart, it's hard to draw a heart and make both sides match, but if you just draw one heart and copy it and flip it over, then you have a duplicate that's exactly the same. So that's the idea here. We're going to start at point A, and we're going to start with a single click. At the beginning of this, is very much like the other pen tool we've already worked with. I'm going to hold my shift key down and go to point B. And at this point, what the curvature tool does is it creates a straight segment. But here's where things get a little bit different with this curvature tool. Um, this curvature tool, it will flex around the points on its own kind of dynamically. So we're going to move to point C and we're going to press the shift key here and click at point C and look at the, what the curve is doing at this point here. It's making a great big curve. Even though we told the top to be straight, it, it's making the curve in a way that wouldn't you wouldn't see happen with the regular pen tool. But let's keep going and you'll understand what happens next here. Now, I can edit this while I'm drawing. I don't have to wait till I'm all the way done to go back. Notice when I take my mouse up to the point B here, I see a different symbol here. That will allow me to double click to convert that to a corner. Now that became a corner point here which is going to allow that bend to happen here. Now I'm going to go down to point D and I'm going to hover down at point B and notice before I click I can see how C and D are becoming very smooth. I'm going to click to set the next point at point D and it perfectly rounded the area all the way from B down to D. Now D does need to be a corner point, so I'm going to double click on it before I proceed, and then I'm going to go down to point E, and I'm going to shift click at point E. Now this might look unusual here because it's not going to stay rounded when I shift click, but we're going to take advantage of the add anchor point feature, and that happens dynamically in this. I want to come back up to this line. Notice when I'm on the line, instead of creating new art after point E, it's going to allow me to, to add a new anchor point between D and E. There's a little plus sign that grows out at the bottom of the curvature tool that shows me it's going to add a new point, but I don't want to just click to add that new point because that new point would be in the wrong location. Instead, I'm going to press my mouse button down and slide the point over, causing the curve here to round out. So I added my own new point between D and E, which caused that to flex in the right direction there. And then I'm going to go back to point E and option click here, or alt click on a Windows computer, to tell that one to be a corner point. Then I'm going to go to point F and do the same thing. and I've option clicked there at point F. Now I'm going to shift click at point G 
and that caused a straight segment there to, to turn in. And now I'm simply going to click at point H and point I. I want to have I kind of straight. I don't want to go up too high here It's because this is going to be the bottom of the dish, the curvy part of, the, of a dish, and it will look a little funny if I don't get this one exactly on. And notice how I'm trying to stay in line with the dotted vertical red line as well. So that will be my final point. And to disconnect from this art, you can use the escape key on your keyboard, which is up in the top left corner of your keyboard. You could have also used this escape key when we use the regular pen tool to disconnect from your drawing because otherwise you're still drawing. But if you press the escape key, it keeps the art selected that you already have there, but it disconnects you from the drawing feature. So now we're ready to flip it over. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have my points down here at the top and the bottom lined up. If I would need to um, make, if, if I thought for any reason they weren't aligned, I would go get my direction, my direct selection tool. So this is a good idea. Let's get our direct selection tool. And we're going to select the point at the top and the point at the bottom. To do that, I'm going to come up here to the, where my top line is. And when I get on the point, I'm going to see a tip there showing me that I'm on that point. Click to hold that to select that one, then shift click to select the other one. Or another way to do it, I'm going to click off so nothing is selected. I can drag with my direct selection tool from the top to the bottom, making sure I only have those two points encircled, none of the other points. I'm not going this far to get those points, but just those two points selected. They both need to be selected at the same time, so I can take advantage of the alignment feature up here, which will let me um, make sure that I have those two aligned properly. I'm going to go up to the toolbar up here at the top, and I'm looking for horizontal align center and it's going to make sure that those two shift if necessary to line up exactly. Now I use the red dotted line pretty well so it didn't have to move at all but sometimes you'll see that that happens. That it actually has to move to get it in line. The last step we're going to do with this now is go get our regular selection tool. Now at this point the whole artwork is selected all that side. If you want to double check that you can click off of it then go click on a curve. It's all selected and I'm going to now go over to find the reflect tool. Now the reflect tool lives in my toolbox in the same location as the rotate tool. The rotate tool looks like a curling arrow. The reflect tool looks like a left a left triangle pointing to a right triangle to gather the reflect tool. That's the tool I want to get and this is how this tool works. You find where do you want the middle to be when you have this object. I imagine I'm going to have a duplicate of this um, dish over on this side here. So I'm going to come in here with this and click on one point of the middle and it can be on an anchor point or not, it won't matter. I'm going to tell it this is where I want the reflect tool to flip it across. So I want to flip it across the center. So I'm going to make my first click here. Then I'm going to hold my shift key down so my second click will be directly below it and I'm going to go somewhere down further. It doesn't have to be all the way to the bottom. It could be just an inch or so down, just to make it easy for yourself. Holding my shift key down, and then also before I flip it, I'm going to hold the Alt or the Option key down because that makes a copy. You'll notice you have a black arrowhead, and when you add the Alt or the Option key, it shows a second arrowhead, which indicates you're making a copy. So I'm going to do this here by flipping it across like that. Now, I'm going to undo it and show you a second way to do it. Another way to do this, instead of flipping it yourself and, and deciding it that you want both of those mouse clicks together, you can simply Alt-click with this tool. And you'll notice when you hold the Alt key down, before you do any clicking at the top, let, let's back up here. I have my left half selected with the Selection tool. I'm going to go get my Reflect tool. This time, instead of me determining the plane that I'm going to flip it across, I'm going to make sure it does it totally straight by letting the computer do that work. Just holding the Alt or the Option key down makes a little dotted line, dot, 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 grow out at the bottom of your mouse, which indicates you're going to get a dialog box. So I'm going to Alt-click there. I get the dialog box. It says, which axis do you want it to reflect across? I want it to reflect across the vertical axis, and I want a copy of it. So it'll keep the old side, the left half, and add the right side, the new half there. And then the last step we have to make, and it's a perfect... Um, 
match to the left side because we reflected it. The last step we're going to do is select all of this artboard. Now you have to be careful with this command. Don't choose select all, but choose all on active artboard. That's going to select both the left half and the right half, or you could have done it yourself with the selection tool. And then with them both, both sides selected, we're going to use the keyboard shortcut. On the Mac, it's Command-J. On Windows, it's Control-J. And it's going to join those. Think of J for join. It's going to join those all into one item there. And now to test it, I'm going to get my selection tool. Click on it anywhere. Notice when I move it, it's all together. I'll do Undo, Control-Z, Undo, Control-Z. I'm going to do a click off of it to deselect it. And I'm going to do a save. And that's how you use the curvature tool.